thanks the conveners and BOS. Uh, I would so if you follow the principles, I think uh, the long term results are guaranteed. This is one of the case which we have almost 19 year follow up now. Uh, Protrusio, it was used with the conventional poly and uh, we lateralized. There is an equatorial fit and we need to place it in an anatomical center. That's a five year. That's a 19 year. Now there is a poly wear, but uh, the cup is well osseo integrated. It's for, it's for revision. But this was with the conventional poly. With the newer uh, bearings, I think uh, we should have better and better results. We know these are monoblock uh, 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 AMRs and bipolars are out. Somebody did uh, AMR, it was painful. He revised it to a bipolar uh, monoblock for reasons uh, only known to his surgeon. And we revised this to the dual mobility. We had to do an equatorial fit, medial graft added with the substitute. And we have almost uh, 10 year uh, follow up of this case. Uh, we need to plan it well. Approach is usual, posterolateral, but sometimes we may have to take a dual approach to take a neck cut in situ, especially in severe cases. Exposure of the acetabulum is the crux, and then reconstruction is usually with the impaction bone grafting or uh, some augments if possible. So Ranawat has given us a guideline where to place the cup. So that's the Ranawat strangle, and uh, it's uh, one fifth of the pelvic height, and you form an equilateral triangle, five, place it five millimeter uh, lateral to the tear drop, and you have to place it there. So less than five mm of uh, the uh, restoration of the center, we have good uh, long-term follow-up, more than 10 millimeter deviation, and the results are disastrous. So there are other methods also which are more confusing. We, what, what we follow regularly is the Ranawat's method. Uh, sorry. So uh, again, uh, when we do that in long term, you will not even know how was the uh, hip before. It looks like a pristine uh, hip. This was a COC, nine year follow up. Limb shortening, offset loss, soft tissue tension are the issues there. Do not try and dislocate or force it to dislocate. If it dislocates easily, fine. Otherwise, you may uh, need a in situ neck cut. And sometimes you don't try and remove the head from the acetabulum. You can ream it, keeping the head within the acetabulum, and use that as a graft. So it follows the principle of uh, you know road formation, tarmac road, where you put in larger morselized bone chips down, then smaller gravels, bone paste, and then cement. If you are using a cemented uh, hip, if you are using uncemented, the same principle, slightly different, but uh, the principle of impaction grafting remains the same. Another case, and uh, <coughs> that's the exposure. Uh, and here, because of the osteoporosis, we prefer to use the uh, impaction bone grafting. That's uh, two year follow. And again, this is almost seven to eight uh, years of follow-up of this. They, they go on. So uh, irrespective of whatever is your philosophy, whatever you would do it, if you follow the principle, I think, I think it should uh, last uh, longer. That was what was done, allograft, uh, femoral head, uh, autograft, and uh, some bone graft substitute. If you're using cemented, I think uh, using a flange cup does help. It does not bottom out, and it helps in lateralizing the cup. Another uh, case, so primary are not very common in our uh, experience. The secondary uh, protrusia are very common. Hemophilic orthopathy, again, this is uh, a protrusia. I will not go into superior and medial migration type of uh, protrusia. These are pure medial protrusio. And again, you follow the same principle. And uh, here, again, if you see the post-op, you have the head is uh, below the level of the uh, trochanter. But that's how, uh, uh, that's uh, what was possible. Uh, impaction bone grafting was uh, principles were well laid down by Sloof, and uh, you, uh, they recommend larger chips, 8 to 12 mm in diameter, and they, ha they have to be impacted with the impaction hammer. The smaller chip, slurry, is not recommended. The alternate technique is reverse rimming. Again, it is not recommended by Sloof. We do it commonly, but the mechanical properties of that are inferior to the impaction bone grafting. And uh, you may use medial. Uh, uh, you know, mesh or so, that is optional. So impaction bone grafting has mechanical properties and biological pro properties, and you have to strike a good balance between these. So if you have larger uh, structural graft, it has a good mechanical property, but it will have poor biology because uh, it will not incorporate it well. If you have cancellous bone, slurry, it has a poor mechanical property, but it will incorporate, the, uh, inco incorporate well. So optimum is large bone chips, which has larger surface to volume ratio. So if you use cemented cup, the stable bed is important for success. If you are using uncemented cup, host bone contact is important for success. And with the conventional uh, cups, more than 50% host bone contact 
should is ideal. Ideal is around 70% contact. If you are using with uh, cups with ultra porous coating, uh, such as trabecular metal and all, 25 to 30 percent host bone contact sufficient. Usual protrusive without any revision scenario, I think primary you would get a good contact. So it should be cortico cancellous graft, it should be washed out, it should be without cartilage or soft tissue, irregular in shape, around 8 to 12 mm, and you should impact multiple times. 30 is the ideal number of that you need to impact, you know. Uh, another, that's the impactor that you would like to use which is available and uh, the uh, um, uh, rough chips and after impaction you get this homogeneous sort of a material don't use bone mill it typically creates uniform small size gravels even if it's there in uh, in your ot it's not suitable for impaction bone grafting it's best done with the ronger or what we call commonly nibbler in a revision scenario, again, this uh, some surgeon did, this was acetabular fracture, he did uh, THR, it loosened, then he preferred to fill this with cement, that's the biggest mistake. Now, you have to have a biological option, this was the time he came to us, and then this, the medial wall was de uh, defective here, so we had to use this sort of a cage there, which is Bushnader cage, impaction bone grafting, and then use cement. Now, don't confuse this with cup and, sorry. Don't confuse this with, uh, so it was a revision and you have, you use a cage and then cemented cup. No, the lesson is protrusio cannot be managed by filling the defect with the cement. It has to be with the biological option. It can be with the bone grafts or you can now use some trabecular shims or, uh, you know, there are uh, uh, shims are available. Uh, don't confuse this construct with the cup and cage construct, which everybody confuses. This is altogether different. You put in a cup first and then cage. Last case, this is a primary uh, auto pelvis, and I almost tried to avoid this, avoid doing this for 13 years. She had painful uniaxial hip. I was trying to treat her conservatively, but ultimately she was begging. And this was the time she came to us. Typical, uh, uh, what was uh, described in the literature, and uh, uh, there was no cleavage at all. These are her Jude's views. And uh, uh, even with the dual approach, you know, go anteriorly, posterior, wherever, the, you can't even get a cleavage. Here I had to do a flip osteotomy, and then ultimately I reamed the uh, head in situ. And uh, by this time we had gathered a good amount of experience and confidence in using monoblock uh, dual mobility without screws, and that was the follow-up. So in short, uh, in the protrusio, it is important to place the cup in anatomical position uh, within five minutes, medial bone grafting is necessary, not necessary if it's less than five mm. Protrusion if it's more than five mm, then you graft it, and if there isn't a gross deficiency, then you supplement it with cage or trabecular augment. Thank you. Mm -hmm.